El Salvador right wing and the presidential candidate of ARENA, a slick, well-financed organization that is more than a political party. It's a paramilitary operation. When Dobison accepted the presidential nomination, he denounced death squads and violence, and he warned the United States not to make any threats against the El Salvador army. But this week, the Los Angeles Times and the Albuquerque Journal reported that one wing of ARENA is made up of death squads. The death squads strike at anyone they suspect of working for the guerrillas or sympathizing with them, even when friends are involved. Say, say I'm a businessman. I sit down and I have decided, along with my other friends, that you're a communist and you must die. I could pay one of my bodyguards to have you killed. That's one type of operation. Even if we're social friends, that happens. There was one man who very painfully told us that he had to sacrifice a friend of his in the name of free enterprise. But most of the victims are the sons and fathers of the poor, the children and husbands of these women who marched recently against the death squads. They marched directly to the United States Embassy to make their protest. Even though high-ranking American officials have been speaking out against death squads, for these women, that was not enough. After all, the United States supports the El Salvador government, and until he resigned to run for president, Roberto Dobison was the leader of the national legislature, one of the most important figures in the government. When reporters Craig Pies of the Albuquerque Journal and Lori Beckland of the Los Angeles Times interviewed Dobison last year, he described his past. Uh, he, in fact, said that when he was a National Guard intelligence officer, that he and other officers made people disappear because they were afraid that judges might be threatened by other leftists and let their suspected communists off the hook. Uh, certainly his party is a party of death squads. In your articles, you describe so-called safe houses. How do they function? We were told by members of Dobison's group that suspected leftists were brought there for interrogation through psychological techniques, and if they did not respond, then that they were tortured, and that they know of no one who had ever reappeared from these houses, that essentially it was an extermination ring. And reporters Becklin and Pye say this is the man who ran the so-called torture houses, Colonel Hector Viegas of Argentina, another country in which the right wing has made thousands disappear with death squads. Pais and Beckland also report that this man is Dobison's supervisor, so to speak. General Nicolas Carranza, head of El Salvador's Treasury Police, one of the country's most powerful military organizations. General Carranza remains in power. So, Roberto Dobison has powerful friends in his drive for the presidency, and his party, Arena, has lots of money to buy him what he needs. Mm -hmm. Dobison is bankrolled by wealthy Salvadoran families living in Miami. Money going from the United States to support a candidate the American government really does not want to win in El Salvador.